Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. You can like, you can subscribe. Thank you for allowing me into your space, into your homes. And um, yeah, what do I want to talk about today? Well, this is my third video and the last one for the night. And I just wanted to talk about PayPal because a lot of us use PayPal. And if you're like me, you will have received an email today telling you to look at the updates the updates that are coming, the upcoming updates with the, to their legal, um, to their legal, what do I call it? Legal what? Legal agreements. Yes, yeah, so we have all received this email and most of us have just looked at it and just kind of thought, I can't be asked. I'm like that. I can't be asked. You know, I know that I should read it. I know that, you know, it's important for me to read it. But the fact of the matter is, have I got time to go through 88 pages? That's how many pages there are. 88 pages of small print on PayPal. And we can be incriminated. We can be agreeing to something just by either not responding or when we purchase something and it says continue to do the purchase by virtue of continuing to your account you are agreeing. A lot of people don't know that. They think that they literally have to tick something to say, I agree to the terms and conditions. You don't. By using their services, you are inadvertently agreeing to these new legal agreements, policy updates. And I'm not going to say that they're harmful to a degree, but it all depends how much money you spend on PayPal, whether you use whether or not you use it as a business, whether or not you have transactions overseas. It all makes a difference. I tend to just use it for, you know, my purchases on eBay or whatever, and I don't spend a lot of money. And to be honest, I'm thinking of doing it direct with my credit card. But we all know that there's this wallet business going on with Facebook where we won't be able to use our credit cards independently very soon. We're all going to have to, and we all know that PayPal and a lot of other payment platforms are all in on this wallet business. So we won't have a choice sooner or later. So you really need to pay attention when they say these legal updates you know, we cannot then say, oh, we couldn't be bothered to read them. I cannot really be bothered to read 88 pages. I really can't. And I don't even, I can't even say I'm going to do that for you. But what I did do is I went online to see who else had an issue with the email and what the updates, hoping that somebody else had done the homework for me. But not so lucky. Most people were saying the same thing that I was saying. Is there anybody who can interpret the jargon? Is there anybody who's had time to read it? If so, let me know. But there wasn't anybody. There's was a couple of pointers um, that I will share with you um, that may or may not be relevant to your particular situation. Um, the first one is if you buy something in a currency that's not your own currency, you're going to be charged. So supposing you see something in America, that's US dollars, of course, and you decide that you want to buy it, you're going to be charged by PayPal. That's one of the ch changes that I observed. Uh, refunds in different currencies. Um, what's going to happen is if you bought something, um, say like in China or any other country, Spain, where they've got a different currency, say, and you appeal it and you want a refund. Now, you st normally refunds take about maybe about two months, probably around that time. So you've bought that for, say, 20, so let's say $200. And then in two months time, that rate goes down, maybe because of whatever interest rates or whatever happens, the currency diminishes and the, you, the currency goes down and you, you end up, it's costing $150. By the time the refund has come through, um, the value of the currency is $150. Sorry, I'm getting a bit tongue-tied. So, 
PayPal will only pay you what that currency rate is at the time of the refund. They're not going to pay you back what you actually paid for it. So that's another part of these up policy updates and these legal um, updates. Um, what else? PayPal fees won't be returned after issuing a refund from March the 5th, 2020. And that brings us in line with the USA. But I don't know what PayPal fees they are. I guess if you paid a fee, they're not going to refund it. Um, but I don't use the aspect of it, so I don't really know what those fees are. Um, PayPal charges are going up, so if you make a purchase or send money from a country that has a different country from yours, um, it'll be more expensive. Um, what I think is interesting, this part, is they will take money from any card you have registered on your PayPal account. Whether or not you authorise that card, they claim it's to make your account in good standing. So if you've got cards on your registered on your PayPal account that you don't want used, you need to take them off. Because what's happened in my past is that I've used I usually use one card, but there has been an instance where I want to use my business card or I want to use my credit cards. So I've put those informations in for a particular pur purpose or a particular purchase and what they're saying the way I understand it is that if I, if I if I opt for my debit card to pay for PayPal and for some reason there's no money on that PayPal account they're going to ignore that instruction and they're going to use maybe my business card or my credit card to pay for that transaction just to make sure that that transaction goes through I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's right because I might have inadvertently thought, thought afterwards, okay, I wanted to buy it, but maybe I don't really want it. And there's no money in the account anyway, so they'll just reject it. They'll just reject the purchase. No, they ain't rejecting the purchase, love. They can find any card that you have, any payment, um, payment um, symbol, oh, payment method that you have to pay for that purchase. So um, those were the main thing that I got out of it. I'm sure there's a lot more, but if you think it's worth reading, I suggest you read it or see if you can get somebody who likes reading to read it for you. Um, I mean, uh, to be honest, they bank on us not reading it. They really do. When they have all this small print, they really bank on you not reading it. And I mean, really and truly, it's so bloody boring and it's written in such jargon that, you know, you get you fall asleep after the first couple of paragraphs. But if you do do business with PayPal, me, I don't use PayPal very often, so I don't have to read it to that degree. I mean, I could be a martyr and do it for you, <laughs> sacrifice my time, but I'm not in the mood. So I'm not going to, I'm going to suggest that if you do business with PayPal, especially overseas business, um, or you spend a lot of money or you're a fee paying um, patron or whatever they call it, or you get money, PayPal pays you, you pay them fees for people invoicing you, anything like that. Because I know PayPal has got a wide remit. They do all sorts of things. And I know people can um, put them, have money put in PayPal and then they pay you and then there's a fee and all that kind of stuff. It's like, you know, I know that there's lots of businesses when they want to sell magazines abroad or if they want to do any purchase abroad. PayPal is really good because all you need, it's very easy to set up a PayPal account. All you need is an email address. You need to verify your bank account and that's it. And it's a very good way if you want to do business. Um, all you've got to do is say to your vendors around the world, look, you can pay me by PayPal. And you just give them your email address. PayPal can issue them an invoice and you then get your money minus a fee. Well, that fee is going up. I don't know how much it's going up to. You'll have to read if that's what you use PayPal for. Um, 
what else? The reason why I stopped using them, I remember um, somebody paid me a counselling fee through PayPal. And it was like they took 25%. I'm just like, really? I don't think so. So that's what I mean. You know, it's worth it if you, it's worth checking it out if that's how you use PayPal. Sorry, I ain't reading it. That's not my bag. Anyway, what else? Refunds in a different currency will be at the rate the refund is approved, but not at the rate you bought the product at. Money to pay for goods paid for by PayPal will be taken from a credit debit card registered to them. Um, like I said, if you don't want to use an alternative card, you need to take it off of your system. Be careful on what you click on when purchasing because apparently under their user agreement, if you click continue after seeing those irritating advertisements that require the account holder to click continue to my account button, you are inadvertently or blindly agreeing to, to agree. You are inadvertently or blindly agreeing to PayPal's 25 page new user agreement that prohibit them from filing a suit against, that prohibits you from filing a suit against PayPal for any dispute under $10,000 and requiring them to agree to arbitration at their own expense in the event of disagreements with the company. So you might know, you might not know that. And by clicking on agree or continue, you're actually going to lose out if there's a dispute under 10,000. And you can guarantee we're not going to have many disputes over 10,000, are we? And then it's at your expense, not theirs. So you need to be careful, peeps. Um, so I'm going to read out loud what this PayPal user um, described, because then it means it might help you or anybody else. His experience. His name's Mike Fleming and he's a PayPal account holder. And he wrote, of course, it would not be fair of me to write of this without providing you with the PayPal's version of what any reasonable person would consider a classic and blatant episode of consumer fraud. PayPal has recently made several important changes to their user agreement and privacy policy. Please read the new user agreement, and it's in quotes, please read the new user agreement and privacy policy because they contain important information about your PayPal account, your rights as a PayPal user, and the ways in which PayPal will use your personal information. Now, I got something similar this morning, which prompted me to look into this, right? So then, if you click a link that is embedded in the words, several important changes, you get a more detailed version of these important changes, three to be exact. I'm reading verbatim what he's written. The first reason, and logically in my mind, the most important is we wanted to consolidate all of our legal documents and make them easier for you to read, navigate and understand. What a great idea they have, I thought to myself, because it is a bit confusing. Confusing. The second reason is we wanted to reorganise the information so you more easily understand your legal rights and obligations and to help you find answers to your questions our various services more quickly. Again, I could not agree more. I've always found it difficult to read the agreement and I'm starting to gain a newfound respect for PayPal. The third reason is one line sentence that seems rather unimportant, so I just glance over it rather quickly and it says, we decided to update our arbitration clause in order to clarify your dispute resolution alternatives. Now, I'm not the brightest light bulb in the hallway, but buried on this second page and under the first two reasons, I may have finally found the catch. What a coincidence it is that PayPal decided to update their arbitration clause several months after their 
motion to enforce the arbitration clause was denied by a judge in San Francisco, California, on the grounds that it was unfair to consumers. And as they trudge along the path of what might be one of the largest class action lawsuits of the year, their timing is interesting in that it essentially tricked many of the company's customers into giving up that right and affording PayPal the opportunity to limit their potential damages and forcing everyone who may have wanted to perform a financial transaction on PayPal over the past several months into a blind into a binding 25 page contract heavy stuff right is this deceit if i was a customer service representative that answers the unlisted phone number and talks to the very smart and persistent and mostly enraged customers who go to great lengths to find the number as it does not appear in the user agreement and I have yet to find it while navigating the hundreds of pages on www.paypal.com, I would say what I was told to say. Go to our website and click on the help section and submit it to us on the contact form. However, I would predict that at some point in the future, an attorney representing the company will be standing before a judge explaining that everyone was clearly told to read the agreement and of course it was a legally binding and simple contract that fell within the criteria of the law and was a meeting of the minds. So here are four more facts and I'll lay them out for you as PayPal might. This is still this gentleman. One. When you're done reading this article, you will have you will have read a lengthy 907 words. 2. The Declaration of Independence contains a whopping 1335 words. 3. The Louisiana Purchase Treaty dwarfs the Declaration of Independence and swells at 3000 425 words, words. 4. PayPal user agreement is 26,540 words. So, what is he saying? He's saying the same thing that I'm saying. Nobody's reading 88 pages. It's too, and they've done it in such a convoluted way that you can get trapped. You're, you're signing away your rights to arbitration and lots of other things so i don't know if you've got friends who are in the reading business but if you do it'd be really great if you can put some comments below to help other people if anybody else has read just a couple of clauses and they want to share what they found um, in the description below that would be useful for other people i mean every mickle mecca muckle so if everybody was to read a paragraph and or a couple of paragraphs and put down their findings below. We could get through that agreement. I just think it's a hard task or a hard ask for one person to do all the work. That's all I'm saying. But in any event, I hope you found this useful, especially if you're a PayPal account holder. Bye bye.